So we're going to be talking about variational equations in the context of ordinary differential equations. Now, variational equations occur in both theoretical and practical contexts in the study of differential equations. Theoretically, they occur when we're trying to study stability of solutions in particular, and practically they occur when we're trying to study how small perturbations evolve. And it's this second way of looking at variational equations which we'll start with to motivate the discussion. So let's suppose we have an ODE written in standard form. And here we'll suppose that X belongs to some open subset of Rn. We'll assume that our ODE satisfies conditions for existence and uniqueness of solutions. So now let's consider some initial condition in the state space of this ODE. And let's suppose we're going to follow the trajectory of this initial condition in forward time. Existence and uniqueness of solutions means that this trajectory is uniquely defined. And let's suppose that this trajectory corresponds to a solution of this differential equation, which we'll call phi of t. So this initial condition here is phi naught. The fact that phi satisfies the differential equation means that we have d phi by dt is equal to f of phi of t t. What we're going to be discussing is the variational equation about this solution phi. So the variational equation for this differential equation around this particular solution phi. We'll discuss what that means and try to get some geometric insight into it. But first, let's have a look at actually evolving an initial condition forward in a rail simulation. We start with an autonomous differential equation, and here's our vector field corresponding to this differential equation. Incidentally, the vectors have been rescaled, so they're not to scale to make it easier to see. Here we've got an initial condition, and as we evolve forward in time, we see the trajectory of this initial condition. Before writing down the variational equation, but to motivate why we're going to write it down, let's do another simulation. This time we take two nearby initial conditions of the differential equation. We're going to follow both trajectories, and we're going to look at, we're going to be interested in, the distance between the two trajectories as they evolve in time. And we see that these nearby initial conditions, the distance between the trajectories stays close, to start with at least, but as time progresses, it can grow. We would hope and expect that we can approximately predict the second trajectory based on knowledge of the first trajectory. And so a practical way of looking at the variational equation is as a tool which gives us a way of making this prediction. We'll also look at it in a slightly more precise way a bit later. But first, let's write down the variational equation. So suppose we have a second solution to the differential equation, this one we'll call psi, and suppose phi and psi have nearby initial conditions. So we'll define delta t to be the difference between psi t and phi t, and we'll assume that delta naught, namely the initial difference between these two solutions, is small. So now let's write down a differential equation for the evolution of delta. And we'll leave out some of the t's to make it more readable. So we get delta dot is equal to psi dot minus phi dot, which by definition is f of psi t minus f of phi t, which is equal to f of phi plus delta t minus f of phi t. And now, being a little bit heuristic, we suppose that we can tailor expand f of phi plus delta t in its first argument. And the assumption here is that as long as delta, which remember is a function of time, is small, then we can ignore higher order terms in delta in this Taylor expansion. And just to be clear, when we write df, we mean the derivative of f with respect to its first argument with respect to the spatial variables x. Now notice that the f of phi t terms cancel, and we're left with an approximate differential equation for delta. Notice that the expression df of phi t is a linear map, which depends on time, which depends on t. 
Now it's this differential equation, which is referred to as the variational equation of our original differential equation about the solution phi. Notice that when we wrote down the variational equation, we dropped our approximately equal to sign and changed it into an equal to sign. So now returning to the picture we had, we have this new solution psi, and we were trying to follow what happens to the distance between these two solutions, phi and psi, as we move forward in time, and we were led to the variational equation. But now notice, because we changed an approximately equal to into an exactly equal to, we got a linear differential equation, but which no longer gave us exactly this difference vector, it gave us approximately this difference vector, provided that we're interested in close initial conditions and for a short time. Because remember, in our simulations, even if two initial conditions start close by, they can diverge after some time. To see what we mean, let's return to our simulations. So as before, we're going to start with two initial conditions, and we're going to follow them forward in time. But the difference is that now the black arrow represents this delta, this first order correction to the first solution. And after a little while, we see that this first order correction is no longer correctly giving us the second solution. The error is starting to grow. The error in this case being the distance between the head of the black arrow and our green spot. Now let's try to give an interpretation to the variational equation as a precise differential equation rather than as an approximate differential equation. So we have our original differential equation, x dot is equal to f of xt. We have our solution, phi, which satisfies this differential equation. And now additionally, we have the variational equation, delta dot is equal to df of phi and t delta. Let's draw our state space, initial condition, and trajectory again. And this is the trajectory corresponding to phi, the solution phi. And now let's consider tangent vectors to the state space at the point phi naught, at the initial condition. So remember, we're assuming that the state space is just a subset of Euclidean space, an open subset of Euclidean space. So the tangent space to the state space at this initial point just looks like the Euclidean space. So when we talk about a tangent vector to x at the point phi naught, we can just think of this as a vector anchored at phi naught. And we'll call this vector delta naught. Now what the variational equation does is it takes these vectors anchored on the solution and maps them forward in time. So now this vector delta naught, after some time, say t prime, gets mapped to a vector delta t prime, which is now anchored at the point phi t prime. So what this variational equation of the differential equation is doing is it's giving us a way of mapping forward tangent vectors as we travel along the trajectory. We should remember that the tangent spaces to the different points on the trajectory are technically different spaces, but in our simple example, they all look like Rn. So we can effectively think of this as a single new linear differential equation on Rn. So let's look at this with our simulation again. Again, we take an initial condition, and this time we draw around it lots and lots of tangent vectors, so vectors which are meant to be in the tangent space to this initial condition. And then we start to flow this initial condition forward in time, and as it moves forward in time, those tangent vectors also evolve, not under the original differential equation, but under the variational equation. And in fact, we see how that circle of tangent vectors gets more and more squashed with time. And in fact, this is generic behavior. That's something that we would expect to see in uh, most cases. What this geometrical picture is actually connected with is the spatial derivative of the set of solutions. Now, if we fix the initial time to be zero, then for each point in the domain x of the differential equation, we have one solution to the ODE. 
and we refer to this collection of solutions with initial time zero as capital phi of x and t. So what is this phi? For any fixed x naught in the state space, so any initial condition, phi of x naught t is the solution to the differential equation with initial value x naught. So phi is a collection of solutions to the ODE. In the autonomous case, phi would be referred to as the local flow of the differential equation, but here we'll just call it a collection of solutions because in general, in the non-autonomous case, it doesn't define a flow. What does all of this have to do with the variational equation? Well, for any fixed point, x, let's say, in the state space, phi of xt gives us a solution to the differential equation. And this makes sense for any t small enough such that phi of xt still lies in the state space at time t, so such that phi of xt is still defined. Now suppose that we differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to the spatial variable x, and we'll denote this derivative by a capital D as before. We're assuming, of course, that everything is sufficiently differentiable for this all to make sense. Applying the chain rule gives us an equation which at first sight doesn't seem easy to interpret. But if we can interchange the order of differentiation with respect to t and x, so with respect to, say, time and the spatial variable, then we end up with something which is much more familiar. There are some assumptions about the continuity of partial derivatives here when we interchange the order of differentiation, but we'll assume for simplicity that these all hold. Now we notice that d phi of x and t appears on both sides of this equation. This is just the spatial derivative of phi of x and t. If we were to formally call it delta, then we notice that we have in fact just written down a differential equation for the evolution of delta, namely, the time derivative of delta is equal to df of phi of x and t and t applied to delta. And this differential equation is precisely the variational equation that we wrote down earlier, provided that the value of x we fixed is just the initial point on the trajectory of little phi. We should note that what we called delta earlier was a vector, and what we're now calling delta is a linear map. But this shouldn't bother us too much. If we know how this linear map evolves, then we know how any initial vector that it acts on evolves in time. So, the variational equation can be interpreted as an equation describing the evolution of the derivative of the solution set phi xt. But this derivative takes tangent vectors anchored at x to tangent vectors anchored at phi of xt. And so we can equally consider it as acting on tangent vectors anchored along a solution. This explains the pictures we had earlier in the simulations, and we'll end with these pictures again.